Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. The United Nations is dealing with virtually every issue that's being dealt with in any other state capital or national capital around the world, dealing with peace and security, economic and social development, and human rights. How does the UN disseminate information and help people understand what it's about and how it affects their lives? Today we're going to look at a very unique organization that helps do that exact task. My guest today is an expert in this area. Ms. Fanny Munlin is chair of the Non-Governmental Organizations Department of Public Information Executive Committee, and she is also the main representative for the Nas National Council of Negro Women at the United Nations. Ms. Fanny Munlin, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you for inviting me, and it's an honor to be here as chair of the NGO Executive Committee and working closely with the United Nations mm -hmm. Departments of Global Communication. The NGO Executive Committee is comprised of 18 representatives who are elected from organizations who are associated with the United Nations Department of Communications. We are voted on by our constituency and we work in cooperation with the uh, UN. And we've been working for the last, we've just had our 68th annual conference and that conference was held in Salt Lake City, Utah. And one might ask, why Utah? Well, it was a great opportunity to let Americans see the work of the UN, to involve Americans in it. Not mm -hmm. only to bring Americans, but to bring local, national, and international agencies together to work on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. That's very important. You mentioned about uh, Americans in particular. The, uh, the s polls going back to 1945, the establishment of the United Nations, have shown that the majority of Americans support, definitely support the concept of the United Nations and support the UN anywhere from about 40% oh, to about, it's been as high, I think it's 88%, something like that. But the polls also show that we do not understand the United Nations and the UN touches our lives every day. And through this DPI NGO Executive Committee and these conferences, you help get that word out as to how important it is that we learn more about it. You mentioned Salt Lake City. What was the theme of your conference there? I know this is this is not the first conference you put on. It's one of a <laughs> multitude. But what was your theme and what were some of the conclusions well, that came out of the conference? We were looking at uh, sustainable go development goal number 11, and that is communities and cities. And one of the issues that we were looking at is the climate action, climate change on cities, education in cities, rural areas, and many people don't realize in America we have lots of rural areas that are suffering. Healthcare, education, jobs, all of those issues were discussed at the conference in Salt Lake City. As a matter of fact, I was co-chair of the workshops and we had workshops on peace and security. We had workshops on education. We had workshops on uh, violence against women, climate action. All of the 17 sustainable development goals were discussed in workshops and people, sh organizations and individuals sharing information, best practices, what is working? How do we uh, obtain those goals? working together. Partnership is really one of the key efforts, the key to sustainable development, making sure we uh, get those goals implemented, that everyone benefit from the implementation of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, this group that you're involved with, as I recall, there are about 1,500, that's 1,500 non-governmental organizations right. ranging from environmental groups, business groups, labor unions, labor organizations, to Rotary International, Lions International, just all, uh, almost all faith-based groups are involved. They're all attached. I, I, they're involved with your group, and they're also involved with helping to achieve those 17 sustainable development goals, are they not? They are, and, and some of them are working individually on different goals. My organization that I represent at the UN, the National Council of Negro Women, the goals that we focus on are goal number three, which is well-being, number four, education, number 17, partnership. 
our organization is a partnership. And many of the organizations are affiliated with the um, Economic and Social Council also work on these goals. We're, we all work in collaboration and cooperation. It is one of the things that I really like about working at the UN is the unity, the working together. And these goals brings us together in a way that we can make sure that we improve the quality of life for everyone. Mm -hmm. those, those three are very important, uh, along with the other 14, but those are very important. Why don't we take them one at a time? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned health and well-being. What, yeah. what uh, is there an example of where you're working with other NGOs or with UN agencies to promote that particular goal or to achieve that goal, I should say? Well, working on education and health and well-being is nutrition, exercise, right uh, physic physical ex ex exercise. You know, a lot of people don't think physical e exercise is very good. So those are the areas that we work on. We look at the family planning in terms of diet. How do you make sure you're getting all the bright nutrients and all vegetables and all things that are health promoting? In education, and we're looking at the STEM program. That is the uh, program now with science and education and technology. And those are going to, that's the area where the jobs are going to be. There are no more jobs where just labor, but it, technology, you must be educated in using technology. And those are the areas that we are looking at. Those are the areas that we're working on. Now, those are very critical areas, they certainly are. And are you teaming up with certain UN agencies on this, with other non-governmental organizations to put on workshops, we put, put on out promotional materials? Yes, we put on workshops, we share data, we share information across economic groups so that everyone is included, everyone is have access to what we're doing, and we collaborate. We, we in collaboration, you share information, you share best practices, you share the things that are really working and things that need to be changed. There are some areas where you have to make modification in some areas. So we share those ideas and, and processes so that we'll be effective. Mm -hmm. Now, as you, we were talking about the Salt Lake City, yeah. the, the Department of Public Information, non-governmental organization conference, I get into the acronyms, DPI, NGO, but that was uh, roughly, how many conferences have you had in the past? I know that they've dealt with nuclear disarmament, they've dealt with education, they've dealt at, uh, with uh, inequalities, just uh, how many have they had roughly going back into the past? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I can't. <laughs> well, <laughs> Salt Lake City was the 68th, 68th annual conference held by the NGO Executive Committee mm -hmm. and the Department of Global Communication. Mm -hmm. I, sh in 2003, I chaired a conference here in New York, and that was about the UN, and that was about the systems and the things that the UN is doing, and to bring forth to the public the workings of the various agencies in the, in the UN, and how mm -hmm. effective those agencies have been over these years. The UN is 75 years old in 2020. But in that period of time, there has been great process and great achievement in the area of health, in the area of education. Although we're not at where we need to be in terms of education, there's a lot less to be done, but we have made progress. And I like to remind people that the world has been safer. We do have uh, ethnic and religious conflicts. But think about it very seriously. We have not had a world war in 75 years. 75 years, there haven't been nation to nation confrontation. And I learned when I was chair of the conference that the design, the, the architecture that designed the building, designed it purposely with large corridors, so that when member states passed each other, they had to speak to each other. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was fantastic. I personally, this is just my personal opinion and my belief, 
that this is the only institution that we have can deal effectively with the complexity of the problems that we face. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely on target on that. Well, it's the only multilateral, the only international institution that brings all 193 countries of the world together yeah. to deal with climate change, to deal with human trafficking, to deal with moving aircraft, ships, mail, weather information around the world. No other entity can do it. There's nobody, there's no other game in town, as they say. And the UN's not a perfect organization, but it has had a lot of successes and the one you mentioned in particular, I think back, you're talking about there's been no world war, and that's true. I think back to 1962, we came very close to, with the, um, the nuclear situation in, um, in Cuba, mm. we came very close to going to war with the Soviet Union, and it, the UN played a critical role uh, behind the scenes in defusing that crisis so that the, the, they could, both sides could win to some degree and not go to war, which would be absolutely disastrous. But you're absolutely right. The UN has had many success stories, and most of them we'll never know about. We, we just will not know what happened here during the, uh, the Cuban embargo and, and, and nuclear arms embargo. So uh, it, uh, it's something that uh, we know they play a role, but we can't prove exactly <laughs> well, well, <laughs> really the idea what it is. We can't prove it, but we do know yeah. that yeah. The, the, a lot of what the UN does is not publicized, and that's good. Uh, but it is the rock bed for what we, for decelerating conflict. Mm -hmm. it, can, it, it can get people to, to talk. And talking, in my opinion, is the mm -hmm. best way to solve problems. It certainly is. We have to. We've got to. We have no choice because we see what happens when people break into the warring camps and do not communicate with one another, then it leads to more misunderstanding right. or a lack of communication. Right. And then that sets the stage for even more violence. And it's just, if you're talking, it doesn't matter. If you're talking to the Taliban or you're talking to whomever, you've got to communicate or nothing will ever right. be resolved. Well, it sounds like you're involved with some really important issues. And do you have the, is the conference slated for next year? Do you know what the theme is? Or is it a little too early to, to well, know what that is? Next year, you know, it's the celebration of the 75th mm -hmm. anniversary of the UN. And then mm -hmm. the, we have two major events happening in 2020. Mm -hmm. The Beijing Plus 25, which is the celebration of the Beijing Conference that was held in 1995 in Beijing, China. It's been 25 years since the Beijing Platform for Action came out of that conference. So we're going to be looking mm -hmm. at the achievement that women <coughs> have made, some of the things that we need to do, new ideas and new programs are going to come forth. Mm -hmm. Then the 75th anniversary of the UN, the accomplishments of the UN, and how do we move forward? What kinds of programs that we need to have in place for the next 75 years. So we're going to have to deal with those issues right now and those programs. And so we have not decided on an annual conference, but I think there will be, so far I've been working on a group, we we're talking about the Secretary General wants dialogue to go on at the regional level, at the national level, at the international level, to get people thinking and talking about the effectiveness and what we, in, in the preamble, it says, we the peoples. And we the peoples mean all of us. This, everyone on the planet has a stake in the UN. And we should all participate because it will serve us if we talk and s solve the problem. And problems mm -hmm. can be <laughs> solved. If there ca is no solution to a problem, there is no problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All 7.6 billion people are affected. You're yeah. absolutely right. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We'd invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with a PBS or community access television station, or perhaps an educational institution, that has an intra campus television hookup, or you just have a computer, you have a website, you like our shows, and you'd like to share them, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided at no cost as a public service to help us better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're taking a look at the United Nations and how it deals with every issue really from A to Z 
that affects people that affect people all around the world. And my guest is an expert in this area. My guest is Ms. Fanny Munlin, and Ms. Munlin is the chair of the non-governmental organization Department Ass of Public Information. Associated. Associated. Yes with the Department of Global Communication. That's right. Thank you. You've, they've ch or changed their yes, name. Yes. <laughs> That's right. The, now the Department of Global Communications. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, again, I'm so delighted you're here and we're talking about these important issues. The uh, Before we go too much further, though, uh, talk a little bit. You've already done it to some degree, but you're with the National Council of Negro Women. Uh, you were involved in the initial formation of the United Nations in 1940. Your, the National Council was, I should yeah, say, yeah. in 1945 in San Francisco. What role did they play at that time? Well, the founder of my organization, Mary McLeod Bethune, and Walter White from the National Association of Colored People, they went to San Francisco at that time. But they couldn't be part of the delegation, um, but they were observers. And she sent back a letter to the Council, the National Council of Negro Women, and in it she stated that all mechanisms developed by the United Nations, there must be a place for persons of color. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really magnanimous on her part, because at that time, segregation in America was at its highest level. As a matter of fact, they could not go to the dining car to sit and eat. They had to order their food and it would be brought back to them. Mm -hmm. But they went anyway, and they persevered, and they talked to the representatives from China, from, from um, Russia, and some from the U.S. And from that day, we have been, my organization, we started off as observers to the U.N., and in 1995, we got consultative status with the Economic and Social Council. And I have in my office today a photograph of Mary McLeod Bethune looking at the building, the UN, before it was, the, the, before it was built, mm -hmm. looking and expecting the building and going over it with representatives from the UN. What role, you mentioned the Economic and Social Council. Uh, how do you interact with them? Do you talk about the issues that are of interest? We talk about the issues. We can make position papers to the council on issues affecting women. My organization basically is an organization of organizations. And let me explain what that means. We have 39 affiliated organizations that work with our organization. We have 250 community-based sections that work at the local level and the national level. And what we say, we have an outreach to more than 4 million women, both nationally and globally. So we work on issues that impact the lives of women, education, violence, entrepreneurial development, economic security, all of those issues that work that impact the lives of women, we work on those issues. Mm -hmm. Those are major issues, especially education and empowering right. women. Right. That is so critical. And we, we, we also collaborate with women, the National Council of Jewish Women, the National Council mm -hmm. of uh, Hispanic Women. We coordinate our efforts because women of color work in coordination and some who are others, National Council of Jewish Women and all others. What, what would you see or what would you like to see in 2020 with the 75th anniversary of the United Nations? They're going, I'm sure the UN is going to be doing a lot of introspection. They're going to be looking at the UN the first 75 years. What's the next 75 years look like? That type of thing. What, uh, what would you recommend? You've, you're an expert in this area. You've seen the issues. You've seen the in, UN from the inside, the outside. But what would you recommend as, or what would you like to see them focus on to really to strengthen it, to make it a more effective and a more efficient organization, and to provide assistance to your group and your group provide assistance to UN agencies? Well, I, the one thing that I think is going to be very important is coming out of the dialogues that we're proposing to have. There must be a unit within the UN where it is a continuous dialogue. It's not just we start dialoguing and then we end it. 
but we continue the process, make it a living thing that change constantly, that ideas, new ideas come forth, and those ideas examine to see the feasibility of implementing them, to see the cost in implementing them, and make sure that NGOs and non-NGOs have a voice and, and continue to work to make the UN stronger, more effective, more inclusive, to make, make sure that we have those things in place. Because there are a lot of people, we, we, one thing I, I say to some people that talk about the, the world, we're living on the planet, and we must all realize this, we're all in outer space, we're not having anything covering us, so we must work together. This is an imperative that we work together, we say, that everyone is valuable, everyone can contribute, everyone deserves the best that life can offer, and we work towards that goal without feeling cheated or less or than anyone else. And I think we can do that through the UN. The UN gives us an opportunity to bring the differences together, to cohesive the difference, to look at the differences as an advantage rather than as a disadvantage. That is quite true. That is exactly where they should be going with it, and hopefully they will be doing that. You mentioned when you're talking about the planet. That brings to mind automatically climate change. Yes. And, uh, in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of scientists, which I'm not a scientist, but that, that is our number one challenge. And it's now we've gone from talking about climate change to climate change crisis. Uh, do you, how, do your, uh, how do the groups that you're involved with, I know you're involved with several, how are they viewing climate change and well, what do they recommend? Climate change impacts every area of life, every mm -hmm. area of our lives d daily. And that we all must become aware and do our part. There's parts that we can do. Everyone has a place, can do something. And, and to mediate the, some mm -hmm. of the impact of climate change. Recycling, uh, driving, uh, mm -hmm. not back and forth. If you need to go sure. to the store, make a list and go to the store. You don't need to it's go logical. for every item <laughs> that you right. need. Multitasking. <laughs> Multitasking. <laughs> Think about it, you know, this is your planet. This is my world, this is our world. And if we are not, taking care of it, who's going to do it? We haven't yet discovered a planet like this one that can support the life that we have here. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon who, during the climate change debates, said there is no planet B. Yeah. This is it. This is <laughs> it. <laughs> this is it. You this make is, the most of this it. This is home. <laughs> this is That's it. right. <laughs> this is no place else to go, so uh -huh. we need to come together. It, come together above racial differences, ethnic differences, economic differences. We can do that. It's a matter of deciding we want to do it and we, and climate action and climate change will force us to do something. Exactly. So we need to be proactive. Exactly. I'm the worst per I strongly. Mm -hmm feel proactive rather than reactive is the best. We're going to deal with it, if not today, tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> and we should have dealt with it yesterday, but we're moving, <laughs> That's we're true. moving hopefully That's in the right true. direction. That's well, true. in the last 30, 40 seconds, over and above climate change, we could spend day, hours talking we about talk climate change, climate but, change right. but uh, what do you see as one other major challenge to uh, your group, to the um, Global Communications Department to the UN as we move forward into the 21st century? Or I should say, yeah, let's say challenge. The, the <laughs> challenge that. that I see is to, to minimize the differences in between people of all religious or all ethnic groups. To see myself in you and you to see yourself in me. To start communications, and I hope what comes out of the dialogues, that we can really talk to each other, talk about issues that are important, talk about things that we do not like, talk about things that we can solve together, and talk about things that we can ameliorate. 
If we can't make them go away, we can at least make them less impactful in a negative way. I talk a lot, <laughs> but I believe in talking because that's the only way that I can know what you are thinking and you can know what I'm thinking. And then when we come together and decide, we can make a decision that is beneficial to both mm -hmm. of us. Ms. Fanny Mudlin, these are important issues. You're doing some remarkable work in this area. And we're lucky to have you and all the groups that you're involved with focusing thank attention on these issues. But I want to thank you so thank very you. much thank for you. a very interesting thank you. and a thank very you. informative program. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.